Welcome, everyone. This is the Rebel Love Show. I am Rob Rebel, and today the co-host, as usual, is Joel Valenzuela. What's going on, Joel? Not much. Just living the dream. Living yeah, the dream. I know. You're living the dream while I'm here stuck in the state's occupied uh, county of Cook County in Chicago. Uh, anywho, you had an exciting weekend, and I had a depressing weekend. So how about you go about first? What did you do in Boston this weekend? Well, actually, I was in Easton, Massachusetts, which is a little bit south of Boston, and I was there at the Students for Liberty conference. There's a few of these all around the country and the world, actually, and the local one in Boston, um, the Free State Project, had a table there, and I was the guy running it. So I went there, showed up early, and just set up a nice little table, and was spending all day just spreading the good news about, why don't you move just a little bit further up this way. Did you get any signers? Yes, we did. We got a few signers. That's awesome. I remember I saw the Free State Project post a picture of you there, which was kind of cool. Uh, exactly. I'm glad you got some signers. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Well, It's interesting to see uh, from the reactions of people, um, anyone who'd heard of the Free State Project was very enthusiastic. It wasn't just like, oh, okay, I know what that is. It was like, oh, Oh yeah, that. Oh, I mean, that's awesome, man. There's always, always something very enthusiastic. I guess we're really touching people. Were, were there like, people there that uh, didn't know about the Free State Project? There was a few, a few casual, a few students who just, you know, were kind of new to the whole idea of liberty and just like, oh, what's this thing about? And then you know, we got to talk to them about it and got no negative responses at all, which is good. Well, that's awesome. Well, I wouldn't imagine you would from a, from a location like that. Well, yeah, there there were a few people who were questioning, like, well, why don't we just move down to Texas? And, you know, Texas is a good place, too. But and I had a bunch of things to rattle off. One thing, Texas gun laws, contrary to popular myth, suck. Yes. You, really can't, you can't even open carry a pistol there in Texas. Mm-hmm. Exactly. People do that all the time around here. And the other thing is, it's just hard to affect any real change. And well, it's one of the most populated states in the country. You're looking at, like, what, 30 million people, something like that, more? Exactly. I mean, New Hampshire has, what, a million population? So it's a numbers game. You get – now, I want to I kind of – the Free Talk Live mantra right here, but it's, like, it's a numbers game, like, you know, Free State Project, yeah, we have, you know, coming up, we've just passed 15,000 uh, signers. There's already, what, 1,400 people there or 1,500 people there? About 1,500 people. About 1,500. In a size of Texas, 1,500 people to 30 million people is a drop in the bucket. 1,500 active people in uh, a place like New Hampshire that only has roughly a million people is a huge difference. Still small, but a lot bigger percentage-wise going in. And you get 20,000 people there or more, and plus the natives uh, working with you as well. You have, you know, it's, it's a numbers game. Like, you have to have some sort of momentum and numbers uh, mm -hmm. to go against status. Like, you can't just imagine a few thousand up against, a, you know, tens of millions. But it was only one million, you, you actually have some power, some sway, some uh, notoriety. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. And one of the things that I was telling, one of the big selling points, is having the community all in one place really helps a lot for everything. Like, when it's just you and your buddy and a few of his buddies that you say, dude, what would be so cool if we did this, if we protested that, if we built that? And that's such a hard thing to get any get anywhere with. But when you have a whole bunch of people in this certain location, then it's all, all of a sudden you can just instantly do something. For example, um, just tonight there was a um, Bitcoin meetup, and there was a you know, good dozen, two dozen people there. It's always a very big presence, especially like in a small local bar. It's like, oh, there's a bunch of people in the, like taking up the whole back area talking about Bitcoin. Man, I wish I bought more Bitcoin like 100 FRNs ago, man. Have you been watching Bitcoin prices? Yeah, they've been talking about it all night. It's like, going over two hundred dollars, man. Yeah, I, 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 I didn't learn. I just spent my last. The, the, the Bitcoin I bought, I, I uh, 
gave you? You, you spent yeah, all that I, too? Yeah, that, that got me pretty damn far, that's for sure. Because prices went up. And I, I, yeah, I know. They, they went up since I... Like, well, that's like this whole flag right here. This whole flag, mm -hmm. This uh, when I bought this, it was like... Um, I think I paid... Uh, I, f I think it was at the time, it was like... Bitcoin was like 60 or 70 bucks, and I paid 0.2 Bitcoin. Uh, at, the, at that time, I thought that was a you know, good deal. But every time I look at this, and then I look at, like, I, on my phone, I literally have one thing I love about Android phones. I got, uh, I have widgets at the bottom of my phone mm -hmm. uh, on one home screen where I have a bunch of different exchanges, and it's showing the prices. Like Mt. Gox right now is 224 though. I'm not a fan of Mt. Gox, but I still, everyone seems to use them as, like, the main pricing gauge. But... Well, actually, doesn't the blockchain doesn't a blockchain wallet actually show you? Yeah, no, yeah. You log into the blockchain wallet, which by far is my favorite wallet because it's an one thing I like about it is it you can sync your um, uh, your online wallet to the wallet on your phone uh, mm. and has a passcode on it too. But I like that because it's, it's technically on both. I don't know. I. I so far, I have to say I'm a fan of that wallet out of the different wallets I've tried. They should sponsor the show, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but no, uh, yeah, man, Bitcoin. I, every time I see it go over 200, it hasn't gone over 200 in six months. And I'm thinking to myself, why didn't I buy a couple hundred dollars of Bitcoin when it was 20 bucks when I first like got into Bitcoin? And I, I spent like I bought like $150 or something like that Bitcoin just to play with it, kind of like to learn what it is. And I bought some stuff online. And whatnot. And as soon as I bought stuff, like spent most of my Bitcoin, that's when the prices like went sky high. You know, and uh, I kind of I like it going high, but sometimes I feel as if I don't I don't want it to. I want it to stay around a hundred dollars. I don't want it to go any higher because I kind of I want it to stabilize at that so it's used more so as a currency than like something to invest in. Does that make does that make any sense to you? Exactly, because when people are holding on to it. Then it's not going to get very much circulation. Well, yeah, I mean, people are just going to buy into Bitcoin because it's, it's a fast way to make a buck, which isn't a bad thing. Mm -hmm. But it is if you want to use Bitcoin as a currency. Like, I, I want to use Bitcoin instead of FRNs. You know, that's what I want to do. But mm -hmm. sometimes it's hard to do so when it jumps from one hundred ten, one hundred twenty dollars, you know, a month and a half ago to now being two twenty four. So sometimes it's hard to actually. You know, no one's going to want to spend Bitcoin when they know it's going to go way up in value. So what's well, the maybe, point? Maybe just paving the way for alt for um Litecoin, because first it's there. If we're going to buy into any cryptocurrency, it's going to be Bitcoin. And then now that Bitcoin is just going through the roof and no one's touching it because they're holding onto it, then maybe they okay. Well, if this thing can work, then let's get a hold of Litecoin actually start trading with it now that we know that cryptocurrencies can work, online-only cryptocurrencies. Yeah. You know, when that happens, it can be like silver to gold. The gold, you just have like the big pile of bars under your bed, you know, they're right next to your old shotgun, and then you just, then you use actual silver to trade. No, yeah, no, I, I, I'm all for competing currencies. Anything that's not backed by a central bank or government, I'm down for. You know, anything that's decentralized where the market gives it value, not you know, someone doesn't have a printing press. Mm -hmm. That's that's what I'm about. Uh, anyways, I want to talk about uh, my run-in with the internet checkpoint that I came across last week. That's been affecting a lot of people in the liberty movement. Um, papers, please. Papers. Yeah, yeah, papers. Um, first off, uh, fuck Facebook. Um, I hate it, and. Uh, you know, I'm back on it because, unfortunately, most people still use Facebook, and the vast majority of the population still does. Anyways, my story, um, most people in the liberal movement don't use their real last name uh, or in their first name. I use my my real first name, but everything else is an obvious. Mm -hmm. My name is a rebel, but that's what I go by. That's what I choose to go by. Uh, I, everyone knows me in the liberal movement by that. And uh, a lot of people uh, also use different names. I was using Rob Volunteers, Rebel on Facebook, and everything else. Uh, a lot of other people were using Volunteers as a real name as a way to um, kind of advertise what it is. Because a lot of people don't know what that is. So they see that in someone's name, middle name all the time. They'll Google it or something. It's kind of a way to advertise what that ideology is. Well, a lot of us in the last couple of weeks have been hit with uh, – 
uh, Facebook. Now, Facebook came out and uh, they hit me with saying I needed to change my name because that my uh, it, it looked like part of my name wasn't real. And you know, I've been using it for a year like that, but nonetheless. So I took out Voluntarius and I put uh, I put the V just as my middle initial, thinking that would do the trick. And uh, a week later, I got hit with literally Facebook.com slash checkpoint. Shit you not. And uh, they wanted they wanted me to submit an I an ID, a state issued ID in order to verify who I am because Facebook has a policy where you have to use your real name. Now, I defend Facebook in that it's their website, it's their service, if they want to issue that policy, that's their prerogative, it's fucking bullshit, but that's their prerogative. If they want to do that, that's them. But me, I'm not about to, I'm not about to uh, submit papers, submit a ID to use a website. I hate the fact that I even have to have an ID. I have an ID. Like I don't even believe in uh, identification, but that's that's a whole other rabbit hole, another whole conversation to begin with. But I'm definitely not going to show ID to Facebook. Now, I was given like three options. I could have bailed on Facebook completely, uh, which I plan to do at some point. Hopefully, I don't know. Um, I could have submitted uh, my papers or simply made a new account. I made a new account, um, so I kind of compromised. Uh, I lost everything. I'm rebuilding like all my my you know 1,500, 2,000 friend lists. I'm rebuilding all the groups I was in. Uh, now we have an issue with the page for this show. Uh, I royally screwed up and didn't have you as an admin, and I was the only admin. Now, do you think I should submit my ID just to get the adminship back in that page and then deactivate my old account or should we create a new page? Like what do you think we should do about that? Well there is currently no admin active for the page because you're on it and you're just you know not an active account. I'll probably, I, let me see if I can get to them first and say look I'm the only guy who's active creating content for this this guy's gone. You killed him. <laughs> this blood is on your hands. So give me the page or shut it down. And yeah. Well, it sucks. We build a bunch of likes on it too. That's I want to use it as an outlet for this, but it is what it is. Um, I don't definitely want to. Mm -hmm. I, I can't submit an ID. I can't do that, man. I I can't do that. Yeah. You know? No. I, the principle of an identification is not necessarily a bad thing, in that. If you have something that I, some something that defines you as you, for whatever purpose that might be, now there is something very wrong with compulsory identification or centralized state control identification. That's the bad part. Yeah. Wait. No, no, I, I I hear you on that. Um, it, it's just one of those things where obviously, I mean. We know the NSA and everything like that. The government tracks everything we do. They know every, they know everything about us and whatnot. Um, but I don't want Facebook to set some sort of precedent where, you know, it becomes nor normal for people to show a photo ID to use a website. You know what I'm saying? And now, mind you, I know other people created fake IDs to get their accounts back. But they're still submitting an ID to Facebook, even if it's fake. And I don't, I just, I don't know, morally, I, I don't, I don't feel like I, I should have to do that or willing to do that. Yeah, that's a, it's not a thing already. Um, and that's one of the arguments with the drug decriminalization is by less hardcore libertarians is, well, we'll just tax and regulate it. And... Think about it now. We, in order to buy alcohol, no matter who you are, basically, unless you're like, you know, this old and you got, you know, a walker with the soccer balls on the bottom, basically they're going to cart you. They're going to make you show your state approved ID, papers, whatever, in order to get a drink. Right now, if you want to buy weed, you don't really have to because it's not really legal. You just go to some guy and say, 
smell the little bag, you're like, yeah, that's good stuff, here you go, and then you go. And there is a part of um, the whole legalization of anything, of any practice or lifestyle or economic activity. The part of part of the thing we have to keep in mind with that is it's not legalizing stuff is good in a certain extent because we think okay well we want more of that but the same t the the problem is once it's legal now it's under the government umbrella now it's part of the system and so we definitely want to legalize everything possible but everything should be legalized nothing should be regulated exactly we need to just think about or it. tax for that matter yeah and so at some point it might be decriminalized to you know use currently legal drugs etc but maybe not completely legalize sale thereof or whatever as long as there's no federal crackdown as long as there's no government um, force and actual persecution of people doing this we don't care what the law says or if you can do it legitimately or not because you know we don't we don't buy their um, perception of legitimacy no I, I I completely agree I mean who gives these people that not, neither one of us have ever met the right to uh, tell us what we can or cannot sell and take a percentage of our sales for their own purposes? Mm -hmm. Well, like a, a friend of mine was just telling me yesterday about, for whatever reason, because his his private practice, private business's um, tax filing has been, you know, he's filed basically, basically not paid, had to pay taxes for a very long time. Unfortunately, because of that, because you know a lot of his business came in places that were not, he was were not accurately reflected on the tax statements. Um, his credit score suffered as a result, and so because he had you know I guess income that was not reported to the government, his credit score his credit score suffered. <clears throat> Tongue tied up here. His credit score suffered. Now, the pro you know the problem is. Well, what if you don't want to get into the whole credit system? What if you just want to stay out of that? And that's when you just realize, okay, it's actually you don't have to worry about all these other things if you're just living out of the system. And living out of the system used to be suicide, but now it's becoming a lot, a lot more feasible. Oh yeah, I mean, especially with cryptocurrencies and everything else, um, it is becoming easy. It's coming easier. I would say it's coming easier and harder, but depending on how you look at it. But yes, there are ways to get off the system. There are ways to avoid taxes and to uh, do work that doesn't involve the government knowing what you're doing. Um, I would. I wish I could live completely off the system. Sometimes, like I'll have an argument with uh, like a conservative statist mm -hmm. uh, about uh, illegal immigrants. It's like, well, they're they're illegals. They're undocumented, you know. And I'm like, I wish I was undocumented. Make me make everyone undocumented. Yes. You know? why, actually, why is it someone else's responsibility? You know who we are. Well, funny you should mention that because when I was living in Phoenix, um, my roommate for the longest time was an uh, undocumented immigrant. For years, I lived with this guy, and there was a lot of things he could not do because, like, for example, air travel was just out of the books. You know. Whenever we go for a road trip, we'd have to make sure it was not one of those on the with a DHS checkpoint on the way over. Oh, that's right. So, uh, they got checkpoints like a hundred miles in from the border down there, don't they? Exactly. Oh, so we they have to make sure uh, there was that little cat and mouse thing. Owning a car is technically illegal for if you are technically illegal, and so in order to own one, it has to be registered in someone else's name. And if a cop pulls you over and asks for a license, you just basically got to except that they're going to impound the car. Now, interestingly enough, the um, title loan places have made a killing off of illegal Mexicans because they've, they've offered to um, what you do when you, your car gets impounded because you don't have a license. You go to the title loan place they, and you take out a lo title loan and so they put a lien on the car and repossess it from the government and then they give it back to you. So the title loan places get it out of the slammer. Anyway, so all these things that make life more difficult, but then at the same time, he would just leave and 
go to work or find go find jobs or whatever without having to worry about oh you know criminal records or um, resumes or anything like that any kind of you know no tax forms or anything he just goes someplace does something and gets money out of it and just everything he does, did with his life he just you know just do it and not worry about uh, where the government stands in this whole thing not not worrying about his official status and so it, it can be a really liberating life if you can do that just there's some huge barriers to to your life you know based on what the government still manages to control yeah I mean you get off the system there are some things you can't do um, especially anything that requires an ID or uh, credit and stuff like that you kind of have to live by cash and uh, or Bitcoin mm -hmm. uh, but you can't really do some things which you know what that's a I understand why people make that sacrifice even for people that aren't uh, you know technically illegal um, which is I hate when people say that because it's like how yeah. can a person be illegal you and know? That's, that's something that's really where a lot of conservatives become big government status yeah just on that issue no because here's the thing if this is actually a government I mean, even pretending for a sec if you pretend government has legitimacy it has legitimacy because it is a government representative of the people of the United States of America now if you've been living if you're a person of the United States of America if you've been living there for I don't know 10-15 years and your government why is your, go your government that's supposed to represent you telling you you can't exist it's I mean why why are you an illegal person if you're living there you pay the taxes you know unfortunately you abide by the under duty. duress exactly you do everything and this is your government to protect you but no you're not you, I don't know your parents came there to just like a little bit too late and then oh there's some technicality so now you're illegal it's like I don't know that's that's like a child telling his parents saying you know I'm gonna evict you from your house it's like well who the hell are you kid but yeah like the reality it, situation is not representative government it just it, it's a huge like I I'll be honest a lot of things conservatives say I I still kind of agree I mean I'm a yeah. all right for those I don't know I'm a recovering con constitutional conservative uh, obviously recovering yeah. statist and uh, you know, and I'm a recovering patriot, you know, and uh, the whole thing is like you get to a point where like they're all about liberty and freedom for them. Mm -hmm. And it kind of ends at that. Like, you know, it's like, well, I'm for Americans to be free. I'm not for, uh, I'm not for, uh, you know, well, no, they're illegal. They, they don't, they got here illegally. I'm like, well, mm -hmm. that's, so what? Who cares? Okay. You know, I mean, if you believe in the free market and freedom, why does an imaginary line written on a map by people long since dead matter? And the only reason why it does matter is because of the status system that we live in today. The tax burden that some free riders get. You're, all right, fine. You can make the argument that a bunch of illegal people are coming in that, and they're uh, draining the system because of uh, it's costing too much. Fine. End taxation. Problem solved. That way no one will get a free ride. Mm -hmm. But that's you know, but yeah. well, we can't end taxation. That would that would uh, stop the revenue for the state. And how would the state function? Like we'll figure it out. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, maybe it won't function. Maybe there's nothing wrong with that. Like it functions well now. You know, most most Function. people that make most people that make the argument is like, well, we have to have a functioning government. It's like we don't have one now. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I shouldn't say we. They don't have one now. It's not my government. It doesn't. It isn't there right now. Yeah. yeah, I noticed that conservative double standard with a lot of things, like for example with business. Oh, business is great, but free trade agreements? No, it's like you can't have these pacts with no North American Union and all this kind of stuff. And then the other thing is, oh, if it's free. You can have free trade as long as it's something and we're okay with trading. Yeah, or outsourcing. It's like. Businesses should have be free from regulations and all this kind of stuff. But if they want to go and build a factory in China, well, no, they can't do that. That's terrible. So like the free market is great until it sends jobs to China. Right, well, so? 
we're all, you know what, we're all human beings on this rock called Earth, and it's like so much, and this goes for both conservatives and liberals uh, in the United States, and this is pretty much for anyone that's a statist, mm -hmm. is they worry about the people that live inside these boundaries as if some sort of like, well, you know, these are the people that I care about. I care about everyone on the planet, and I want to treat everyone equally, and everyone is the same. Like, you know, people argue, like, well, we have too many people living in this country. We, There's not that many people living in this country. Yeah, there's populated areas in certain, like, New York and Chicago and L.A., but, I mean, you can, yeah. there's a vast amount of this country that is not populated at all, have that we can definitely Arizona? support a large population. Yeah, like, have you been to Arizona? There's some people in Phoenix, and then you just drive for hours and hours to just abandon. All across the West, there's basically no people. Yeah, you but the Fed, yeah, the reason why is because the Feds bought most of the, well, they didn't buy it, they stole it. most of that land. Most of that land, and if you look at a map, and you look at, like, uh, national parks and protected, uh, uh, you know, uh, forests and stuff like that, a majority of that area cannot be sold. It's It's owned by the federal government. The federal government owns like something like 60 or 70 percent of the West. Yeah, it's, it's pretty incredible. And even if you go though in places that are, even places like in the East Coast, like New Hampshire, there's not a lot of people in New Hampshire. And even though it's a lot more condensed than out West, there's bits of town and just lots of forest and woods and it's just the most, most of the world there's some places like India has way too many people, that's for sure. Because in the cities, it's literally 10 feet between each person or less yeah. the city over. And out in the countryside, you're never out of eyesight of another person. You never don't see a person, ever, in the whole country. And so that's clearly too many. Some parts of China are that way, but most of the west of China is basically unpopulated. Other than that, the whole world, there's tons of growing room, tons. No, no, I, I completely you know. agree. Yeah. Hey, anyways, did you see, uh, change subjects go, uh, going, um, did you see that uh, article, I forgot where it was at, uh, about uh, the police department in Columbia, South Carolina? You know what I'm talking about? No, I'm not. They uh, basically, so, they uh, post, they have a Facebook page, and someone posted on their Facebook page um, after they, uh, made a comment about how uh, oh here I actually got ring on my phone. Um, they posted uh, on their Facebook page that uh, let me see here um, that they arrested someone for uh, possessing pot. And this guy named uh, Brandon Whitmer goes. He commented on their post, and this guy's a keyboard warrior for sure. He goes, uh, maybe you should arrest the people shooting. Uh, uh, people, instead of worrying about stoners that uh, are not bothering anyone, it's going to be legal uh, here one day. I agree with them. Now, the Columbia Police Department comments back, Brandon Whitmer, we have arrested all the violent offenders. Thank you for sharing your views and giving us reasonable su suspicion to believe you might be a criminal. We will work on finding you. And it has more likes than his comment, too. Um, yeah, the police basically going after people for yeah. free speech on their Facebook page. Yeah, I actually did see that one. God, that was... How do we, uh, as, like, liberty-oriented people, convince the majority of the population that the police are, for the most part, nothing better that or nothing worse, I guess. Whatever we want to look at it, they're no better than an organized gang. It's, a, it's just that somehow they have this authority to steal from people and to kidnap them. Well, that's all. That's a question for the ages. But the big thing is replace them. Because think about this. It's like you go up to someone and say, you know, not breathing can kind of suck. We can't wait until we stop breathing. And they just look at him like he's insane. Like, what are you talking about? We just all we all have to breathe. That's what we do. And then there's just this this crazy dude over there, you know, with all his bitcoins and all this stuff like that, all rattling about, oh, we can't breathe anymore. It's like fuck that guy. 
But that's what we seem like when we're talking about Ooh, the cops, this. It's like, yeah, well, do you have a better idea, jackass? That's the thing. We need that. We need to show the better idea. Well, isn't there? Isn't there a? Um, what's the name of the organization in Detroit that is trying to do just that? Uh, was it like a threat management center or something like that, Detroit, where uh, they're basically paid security, mm-hmm. but because they have so many clientele or whatnot, I'm not. I'm probably shooting out my ass on this, but I remember reading it. Uh, where uh, they are uh, going around the neighborhoods of bad, or like bad parts of Detroit, um, because they have so many people that are paying them, they're able to as goodwill and for just to build up good customer loyalty and support of the community, are going around and acting as security for the community and pretty much trying to prevent any crime from happening um, without using any violence. I mean, obviously, if they're attacked, they're going to, but they don't have arrest powers or anything like that, but they're trying to be a dispute resolution organization. But uh, the police hate them. The, I'm sure the police can't stand that the fact that they have competition right there. Competent competition. Now, that, that's a good thing, though. Like, what would happen, and I mean, they can get away with that in Detroit because Detroit – has like no revenue anymore and they've laid off a lot of police and stuff like that so I mean they can probably get away with doing that but imagine um, like a normal city of America like a bunch of people getting together uh, putting on uniforms and mm-hmm. you know painting up their cars and driving around acting as the police and they would they would offer their services they would have they would you know they would put ads out um, you know what would what would the, the local authorities think of that? Well, I'm sure they would just shut it down. They think it's like a violent game. <laughs> <laughs> they probably would. They would think, well, you know, but that's the whole. That's my whole point. It's like, you know, just if you know, the police are a violent gang. I wish that wasn't the case. I wish the police actually had, you know, showed some sort of uh, good. Uh, you know, morals and whatnot. Mm-hmm. I mean, just Google police brutality and you'll find thousands of hits of police being brutal to, uh, you know, common people. I mean, I don't know about you, but I've never, I've, I've never had a good um, interaction with a police officer. Even when I was a status, like I, I mm-hmm. never have had, I've never been arrested, thank God, but I've never had a good interaction with a police officer. Yeah, um, that's kind of the point. They're not trying to interact with you to make you happy. They're just trying to do whatever they need to do to make you unhappy. That's my uh, Well, it's also to show that their authority. What really gets me upset is like public schools where they have like I remember I remember when I was in public school and I still I still have my shirt from fifth grade, my dare t shirt. The only reason why I kept it because it now fits me better now than it does then because I'm also a recovering fat guy. But that's a whole other mm-hmm. story. Um, oh. But uh, I remember a police officer coming into that class saying, you know, don't do drugs because we'll arrest you. And, you know, you don't want to be in jail for uh, having drugs, so don't do drugs. It's like pretty much just nothing more. A, it's like an indoctrination of showing intimidation that they mm-hmm. are the ones in charge. And B, it's showing that, um, you know, this is what happens to people that don't do as they say. Mm-hmm. But I can understand why a lot of people don't, can't stand public school because just that indoctrination alone, like I, I still, that, I still remember as if I was in that class, like that, that was like, man, these, I remember the time thinking like, oh, I, I got to do what I, well, these are, these are adults and they're wearing uniforms. Like, you know, I have to, follow what they're doing, you know. Um, Jackass in a monkey suit. I mean, it's not it's nothing special, nothing magical. Yeah. Yeah, but the, that's the thing. People give them some sort of, you know, a, I don't know, some sort of authority. It's like, well, they put on a shiny badge, so they must have extra rights. And so, yeah, and they got those teardrop tattoos and the big loose clothing. and the, so, Yeah, it's the same thing. as you know, like you, you ever see in those old like Viking movies, there's some chieftain walking around with like skull like necklaces and stuff in case he sees like the hot shit. It's the same thing. These humans just like adorn themselves with things like that, makes themselves feel tough. And that's the that's the other thing with the 
uh, whole police situation, it's not so much, it's not only, okay, we can do their job, they're not necessary. It's also about um, fighting back. And a lot of times it's just, well, okay, once they invoke their authority, we can just bitch about it and that's it. The thing is, it's the whole. It's easier to ask for forgiveness than permission. Mm -hmm. you know, they, they go do something, they stomp, curb stomp someone, and then they just run away. And then, all right, even if they get found in the wrong, then almost nothing happens. It just keeps on going. And no cop, when they thinks that they are going to suffer any negative repercussions from stepping out of line, there's someone who mouths off to them, and they go knock their teeth out. And then the worst is happens, okay, they get some paid leave, and then uh, and then people who recognize them in public might hate them, but other than that, they're fine. And there's this, there's a very powerful, it has a very powerful effect if you are, you have to think twice before visiting violence on another person. Because if you don't, you, it just happens again and again and again. But now if he's thinking, okay, what if this guy is going? Because what if this guy is going to fight back successfully? Then all of a sudden it's like, eh, not quite so much. And you know, we're not at the point where we're saying, you know, oh, let's just go out and start gunning after the police or whatever. But yeah, I'm a, I, I consider myself uh, mm -hmm. in between uh, Larkin Rose and Ian Freeman on that type of stuff, mm -hmm. where I'm like. I, I, I'm I, I'm on like both sides of the fence when it comes to self defense and when do we shoot back and when it's okay to shoot a cop and all that jazz. Speaking of, uh, what's your take on what happened at LAX? Um, well, the TSA I, guy being I, uh, shot with a. Uh, tried to take, stay out of it as much as possible because it's just. But my take on that is, why did, why did it take so long? I mean, not not. Yeah, like, no, yeah. I'm surprised there wasn't there has been violence earlier. I mean, I'm not an advocate of violence, but I'm not surprised it happened either. I mean, the TSA are horrible, mm -hmm. you know, pedophile goons in my opinion. I mean, they're the one. I I I I fly usually a couple times a year, and I can't stand it. Like, I, it's it feels like you're going through like it's worse in my opinion than. But the um, like being asking for papers in pre World War II Nazi Germany, I mean, yeah, it's, it's it's awful. Now, I've been through and very 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 many times in my life because of my my dark past. I've been through scanners at presidential events and to go in to see the president himself, and it's a little simple metal detector, and you just like keys and that's it, and you just walk through. And that's it. That's the entire the U.S. Secret Service does a great job keeping the president safe by having a little simple metal detector. Just okay, we don't want anyone bringing guns to the president. That's it. Now that ever that means anything beyond that that the TSA does is just absolute nonsense. Because any argument, oh, shoe bombs, you know, other things like that, they could bring to a presidential event. You know, chuck a shoe bomb at him, boom, there he goes, and. It has nothing to do with security. It's just, it's all dehumanizing. No, exactly. I mean, we're going down the whole uh, conspiracy uh, theory road here, but no, I agree. It's uh, the TSA are nothing more than there to show who's boss, and it's basically trying to domesticate the population. Uh, and unfortunately, most people go along with it. I remember, I wish I was recording this, but the last time I went through the TSA, I was... I was running late. To my, I literally got in a car accident right before I left for the uh, left for my uh, um, uh, trip. So like I was already running late. I had to get a ride it's like last minute, and I made it to the airport with like minutes to spare. So I'm running to get to 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 damn TSA checkpoint, and I go through, and this is the, at, at the time last time I had gone through uh, Midway they hadn't had uh, they didn't even have scanners there at the time or no they had like one and they would randomly pick people to go through or whatnot I'm like okay whatever and I didn't get chosen which thank God but this time I did because they didn't they picked everybody 
Well, not everybody, but basically every line had a damn scanner. Like every single line. It wasn't just one scanner. It was like ten scanners. And uh, I remember there was a family in front of me. And this TSA guy, and mind you, this TSA guy looked like your stereotypical TSA guy. I shit you not. He, he was, he looked like he was in his late 40s, uh, had a huge pot belly, and looked like a pedophile. And he was like, you know, no, you got. He let these this whole family not go in the scanner and walk around it. And then I come up and said, well, you have to go through the scanner. I'm like, well, you literally just let the the three people in front of me go through. You know, it's like, well, this is for security reasons. You have to go through. It's like, well, what if they were carrying a bomb, and you just let that pe those people go onto the you know the plane with a bomb? See, they go through this. pocket right there. Look, look. <laughs> Well, it's my whole point. It's like, you know, either everyone goes through or no one goes through. Like, how can you let these people go through, you know? Um, so I'm like, I, no, I'm like, I ain't going through. I'm sorry. I'm not going to do this. I, I wish I was recording it on my phone. I really wish I was because afterwards it, it took him forever for, like, for them to, like, take me to, like, this, the, the, the sexual assault area of uh, the checkpoint where it's in the open or whatnot. And, you know, I literally laid into him about how, like, this is unconstitutional. And, you know, I'm not a constitutionalist, but I'm trying to act from the state's point of view. And I was like, you know, a cop on the street wouldn't be able to do what you're doing right now. You know, I don't consent to this. You're doing this under duress. Um, this is no, this is worse than what the Nazis did. So we're trying to protect you. And you, you don't have to fly. And I'm like, bullshit. You, know, like, you don't have any authority under the Constitution to even do this. Uh, there's a thing called the Tenth Amendment, you know. And I literally made him, I was like, I don't know how you sleep at night. Uh, do you get off, you know, feeling up strangers in an airport all day long and shit like that? I mean, I was, I was really rude to the guy, but I'm sorry. If you work for the TSA, get a new fucking job. I don't care if you're if you need the money. Um, yeah, I, I can't stand anyone that does that line of work whatsoever because it's it's not the government's role to provide security. It's if you do believe in the small government, it's the, to keep you free. And even then, I don't think that's even the government's role to begin with. It's your job to keep yourself free. But man, I. I I'm just I'm very bitter and I'm very I'm very much hate the TSA with a passion. So if they hear this, I'm probably won't be out be on no fly list, uh, list soon. But I don't condone like the nut that uh, killed the TSA guy. I'm not surprised by it, but I don't condone it. Um, but at the same time, I think that might be used as a reason to go after people in the liberty movement because there's like notes he had about the NWO and fiat currencies and hatred of the TSA. And uh, that's a lot of stuff that people in liberty circles talk about. Mm. Yeah, that's that's always going to be um, a friend of mine who has been in jail before. He mentioned that you know during the when you're you know, inducted or whatever you call it when you go in, they they do like a whole strip search, cavity search, everything. And the guards doing it, like, they're not enjoying it. They're not all like, oh, yeah. They're just, they hate it as much as you do, but they're forced to because of their job. And it's not, again, it's not because they want to. It's just because the higher-ups decide that that should be part of it because they would totally want to treat you like an animal to make you feel like one to put their place above you. It's like the whole... It's like they're making a whole country nothing more than a prison. Exactly, and it's, I mean, to not getting into the whole prison thing too much. It's like the prison rape thing is not, a lot of it is about power. It's about, look at me, I got, look, you, you're nothing, I'm everything. And that's that's what the government does to a lot of people with these little things like the TSA that they're not gaining anything from the extra things they, they just, all they're gaining is pushing us down. Hey man, Obama's nothing more than the prison warden. Exactly. Anywho, um, all right, so earlier today, I decided for the first time in over a decade, mm. I had time to kill. I turned on the TV, I turned on NBC oh. and watched the nightly news. I'm really sorry, but you need a hug. 
maybe it's the fact I haven't watched. I really don't ever watch TV live anymore, ever, for years now. And whenever I do watch TV, it's like something that's DVR'd or like on demand with like very little commercials, if any. And it's pretty much all I do watch. When I do watch TV, it's just like a drama like Breaking Bad or something, and that's it. Um, I don't know what I saw worse, man. It was, uh, the commercials or the uh, the fact that like all the statism, like they, they had Carrie in at uh, – um, Kerry was in Egypt talking about how he's support of the military in hopes that they can restore democracy. Like, why would you want? First off, I don't want military control. I don't. I don't believe in democracy either. I'm like, and why would we? First off, we shouldn't. Even, they shouldn't be supporting democracy. They, democracy. They should be supporting liberty and freedom. It, it to me, it just seemed like it was nothing more than like rah rah USA and support of democracy, which is nothing more than majority rule, and they get to steal whatever they want because the majority decided it. Mm -hmm. And you find a lot of that with the lightning news and the generic population. There's a lot of that government is a given type thing. It's not so much, they're not defending government. They don't even, they never get to that point. They just, that's a given. We have to do this. This is just, well, everyone knows that that was like, how are we, like, how are we going to save Social Security and Medicare with this new whatever, you know, again, pick your year, pick your crisis, whatever. How are we going to save Social Security? It's like, why the hell do we want to save it? No, because we need it because cause it, it's there. It's like always it's there. It, that's the biggest argument is it's there. Yeah, exactly. I mean, Howard, uh, that's, that's a whole thing against, like, people that were against uh, slavery before the Civil War. It's like, well, who would pick the con? Because that's what's there. Those are the people that are doing it. You know, we don't have a system in place. We'll figure it out down the road. It doesn't mean that we have to enslave the entire country to pay for something that some of us don't even want. Exactly. We'll, exactly. Figure, we'll figure it out. You know, we don't have to point guns at people to figure that out. Anyways, I got uh, – Kind of a family emergency I got to take care of in a couple minutes, unfortunately. So I want to have to cut this short with you. Um, where can people find? Oh, first off, before I even let you go, get your YouTube video up. I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep bitching at you every every episode we do until you get some content on your channel. All right. Got a backdrop figured out, etc. All right, get it done. Uh, where where can people find you? At? Well, thedesertlinks.com. I keep on publishing articles a couple times a week. I keep on, they keep on getting more and more hits on the Victory great, March there. It's a great site, by the way, people. Check it out. Yeah. And Twitter, there's my little Twitter handle down, down there at the bottom, at the Desert Links. Maybe right there. Yeah, there you go. And I'm on Facebook, Google+, Plus, Pinterest. But they get the fuck off of Pinterest, man. What are you doing? <laughs> I mean, Instagram. yeah, I'm on Instagram, but shit, you're on Pinterest, man. Instagram, I... Whatever. I like photography. That's you got to see what people are doing, right? Here. I, I, suppose, I suppose so. You got to reach out for people on every, everywhere. Actually, so. Pinterest has been very useful for me because I've had quite a nice big pin board of pictures of New Hampshire titled The Free State. And whenever people are, they ask me about it, I just throw my pin board right there. Look at that. Look at all that cool stuff. Don't you want to be there? It's been okay. very useful. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. I, can't, I can't knock you for that. I can't knock you for yeah. that. Um, Anyways, you can always find me at uh, Voluntary Rebel on Twitter. I got a uh, custom URL for my Google Plus account, uh, yeah. Plus Rob Rebel, which is awesome. I don't know. I geeked out by it because I'm a, I'm a tech geek too, so I thought it was cool. Uh, I'm also back on Facebook uh, at uh, uh, facebook.com slash Rob Rebel. Our uh, URL for the uh, show is facebook.com slash uh, the Rebel Love Show. Uh, hopefully, we can still keep that if he gets – be admin on there otherwise we might make a new account for that i'm not sure um anyways uh hopefully we'll be on back again next week joel that's cool with you exactly all right peace guys peace